All right, hey guys, what's happening? Back for another episode on the Rev and Evan channel. I appreciate everybody uh, checking out the videos. The 7.3 stuff has been really hot. Um, I know it's brand new and everybody's really super excited to see what's coming up next. In this video, we're going to take the bottom end apart, show you all about the bottom end. Um, and then we have another video to follow with the engine running on the dyno. So that's going to be really cool. A couple of points of interest though. Um, first things first, this is not a Coyote replacement. A lot of people are thinking it's going to be the Coyote replacement. That's not really the case. This is a truck engine that has really great architecture and it's going to be really great to hot rod this thing and to do ported heads, cams, superchargers, nitrous, all of the above. Um, and I think it's going to turn out to be a really great race engine. Brian has some really great things going on in his shop. Um, and that's some stuff that we're going to work on in the future. We'll be getting engines running on the dyno, different levels of horsepower. So that's going to be really cool. Hey, and thanks to everybody who's checked out the channel, left a comment, hit that like button. We appreciate all you guys. And also, don't forget to subscribe. This way you won't miss out on any of the content. Hit that subscribe button. We made that easy with a, uh, a button at the top of the page in the header. And also, you'll find a subscribe button in each video. And if you don't want to miss out, you can hit that notifications button. So you get a little ping each time we throw up a new video. So we're going to jump back to the shop. We're going to go right into the engine block teardown. But uh, if you want to see the top end come apart, if you happen to miss part one or part two of this series, we did put one of these motors in a Fox body, so you'll want to check that out. And you can also see the video that precedes this one, where we took the top end of the motor apart. We talk about the intake manifold and the cylinder heads. So let's get to the shop, and uh, we'll talk about the block, and we'll get right into it. Okay, so if you want to take a look at the deck surface, um, you know, it's a nice thick deck. Uh, but one thing you will notice is between the bores, which is really important for reliability in the trucks, you have this saw cut, and that was really to help bring uh, coolant flow um, that's, you know, uh, that, that's needed. Uh, for an aftermarket drag applications, people will probably, you know, wonder why that's there. But uh, it was really critical uh, for the reliability and coolant flow with the Super Duty products. Okay, we're going to pull the front cover off so you can see what's behind there with the cam drive. Uh, one of the things about this front cover is again it was designed for super duty in the in the heavy in the heavier Ford trucks, and it's really really nice and efficient for that. So it has you know a very small water pump that's bolted on that is uh, you know serviceable, but a big chunk of the water pump is also part of the front cover. So just really the impeller is in there it has a very large bearing for reliability. Again, racers not going to worry about that too much, but it was important as a design feature there for the, uh, the intended customer, the truck customer. Also as part of this, instead of having separate brackets that are, would be bolted on for tensioners and idlers, um, you know, that's integral to the cover. So again, it makes for a nice stiff front cover. Um, I think it's gonna be really good for aftermarket accessories as well, uh, for retrofit and other cars. Um, probably race applications, people will be looking to skinny that front cover down a bit. All right, Brian, so with the cover off, we can see this is not the conventional um, V8 cam in block drive for the camshaft in that there's a variable cam timing setup and a tensioner. And then obviously there will be a drop down chain for the oil pump. So can we talk about that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So again, you know, it's keeping in mind reliability, um, all of our cam drive systems now on the uh, tight side has a guide and on the slack side it has a chain tensioner um, and of course as you mentioned this is a VCT unit so it's a dual equal unit so you advance or retard the entire cam uh, phasing. Uh, this feature, um, you know there will be some people that will want to lock it out but depending on what uh, ECU you end up using you actually may want to take advantage of having that extra you know, ability to advance the cam at lower speed and retard it a bit at higher speeds. I think it's really great. Um, this sprocket here, this small sprocket, um, I have already taken it off, but this would drive the oil pump. Uh, that is uh, a, an assembly that's down in the pan to drive the variable displacement oil pump. Okay, this is just a piston out of the engine. This is one that hasn't run yet. Um, the piston is a you know really nice design. 
But one of the things you'll see is, you know, from the factory today, I mean, back in the old days, you'd have a 1-600 compression height or higher from the factory. This is already pretty tight. So if you're going to run boosted applications, in my opinion, you're probably not going to be able to tighten up on that compression height a whole lot. Uh, this engine is almost a four inch stroke from the factory. And, you know, taking everything into consideration with the stock block, I would be leery of going much beyond a 4100 or 4200 stroke. So you're probably going to be talking maximum cubic inches of the 470 to 480 cubic inch range. I think you could push it to 500, but I think you'd have to go pretty large on the bore and then I'd start to worry about the bore wall thickness if you went and did that. Got tool clearance. All right, Brian, so we got the uh, the pan off of this thing and it's robust, right? Six bolt mains and forge crank. What do you think about this thing as far as handling boost? Well, you know, I think you kind of just answered your own question. Six bolt mains, forge crank. You know, I think, you know, this is gonna be really, really good for most reasonable level boost, most street guys, uh, racers for, and you know, to be frank, um, I think it's going to be good you know, even for an alter street motor using stock block. Uh, I plan to do so. So uh, for those who aren't aware, please explain ultra street and the horsepower level essentially that you'll be trying to achieve out of one of these motors. Yeah, ultra street is a class. It's an eighth mile class. Um, it runs, you know, it's got some pretty tight rules around it. Um, in a car that weighs about, I think about 31, 3200 pounds, cars have to go like 470 to be competitive. So you're talking, you're gonna be have to make about 1800 horsepower uh, in my view. Um, that's what I'm thinking ahead of time anyways, uh, to be competitive in that class. So I'm pretty confident in the stock block. Um, the only issue with that class is it's a 440 cubic inch maximum. And this is 445 from the factory. So I'm gonna to have to do something with the crankshaft um, that um, you know, is gonna make it work. So Brian, uh, this thing looks pretty robust. Iron block, six bolt mains. Uh, what about boost? Can can somebody just chuck a blower on this thing and how's that gonna work out? Yeah, you know, I, I think this thing's gonna be really robust for you know reasonable levels of boost. And I mean by reasonable levels, I mean, you know, the typical street, you know, eight, nine pounds of boost. As you mentioned, we've got every main cap has got six bolts, four down two across through the deep skirted block. The deep skirted block, as you can see, has got a lot of ribbing for stiffness and for you know noise vibration and harshness for the production vehicle. It has uh, bosses for four knock sensors. There's one here, I removed one on that side, there's two on the other. Um, so this block and, and the crankshaft itself is forged. So you've got a really stout bottom end to start with for sure. All right, so what about uh, cooling? How's the cooling work on this thing? Is it pretty typical of uh, Ford V8? Well, I tell you what, I got something else uh, that will maybe demonstrate that a little bit better. Let's take a look. All right, so what we did here is we took a stock block and we cut it with a bandsaw about one inch below the deck. And this allows you to see, you know, inside the bores themselves. You can see we have a lot of water around the bores. They are Siamese. Um, and the other thing that's pretty unique is the way the coolant does flow, it makes for a very nice um, core because as you know, when a block is cast, you have to put a sand core in there to core out the area that you don't want metal. So it has the one support of the core here and then a sizable core and then just a single freeze plug by per side, we call them freeze plug, but of course uh, this has, is threaded and that's really not a freeze plug as much as it's really a core plug to hold that core in place when the block is being cast. Okay, just a couple pieces from the bottom end. Again, being the truck um, duty cycle that uh, the engine's designed for, yeah, this really, really stout forge crank. Um, you know, I think that this crank could be used as it is for most every user that can live with the stock stroke, which is just under four inches. So it's a nice forge piece, uh, good oiling um, from the block into the mains through the rods. Um, not a ton more to be said about it. Um, moving to the connecting rod, you know, the connecting rod, I think is something that, you know, the typical 
engine builder will work to replace. Uh, when you go to work on this thing, the one thing you'll notice uh, that's kind of unique is this has these external torx fasteners. So you have to go buy your external torque socket uh, to take the engine apart. And um, the other thing about this connecting rod, very common, uh, Ford's been doing it for many, many years since uh, 92, called a crack rod. And what you can see there is you can see those services. So those aren't machined and then put back together. Actually, the bearing bore is machined and then they notch the sides and actually pull the rod apart and crack it. And you know, at first it sounds a little scary, but it really is good because that cap can only go back together one way. So when you go and put that back together, um, it's going to be exactly as it was. So it's a, it's a nice feature from a manufacturing and OEM perspective. Um, I think, you know, the racers are probably going to a rod that's a little stiffer than this powder, powdered metal rod though. Um, piston, we've already talked about the piston, you know, a nice slow compression height, compact piston. I, again, I think, um, for a lot of mild performance builds, naturally aspirated, you may even not even want to touch the piston or rod. But I think as you start to get into nitrous oxide and boost, you're going to want to probably upgrade those parts.